Hi everyone, Dr. B here. And so in this video, what I'd like to do is show you how to compare chair structures of polysubstituted cyclohexane rings. And so by polysubstituted, what I mean is cyclohexane rings with more than one substituent. So to show you how to do this, I'll show you a first example with trans 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane, which is the compound which I've shown you here. So the first step in comparing the chair structures of these species is actually to do a little bit of numbering such that we're able to track which carbons have substituents. And so what I'll do is I'll label starting at this carbon. You can really start wherever you'd like, but as long as you keep it consistent, it's the important thing. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so what that allow, then allows us to do is to maintain the fact that we're going to keep our substituents on the same carbons. We're not breaking any bonds here. We're simply flipping cyclohexane rings. So to look at this in the chair structure, the first thing we're going to wind up needing is a chair. So we'll go ahead and draw that in, let's say, blue. So two diagonal lines. Yep. And there's our first chair structure. And so what we're then going to do is we're going to map the same numbering system onto this chair structure as we had in our flat cyclohexane ring um, shown up here. And so what I like to do is I typically like to start in the upper right corner. That being said, it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you wind up doing this consistently. And so I'll do that in the same color. We'll say red. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'll fix that four up a little bit there. And so what we can see then is to make sure that this chair structure in fact matches, and by this I mean the uh, chair structure we've drawn, matches the flat structure we've shown above, we've got to add in our substituents. And so before we do this we need to make a decision. We can see in the flat structure that we have both a wedged and a dashed bond, meaning that the two methyl groups are pointing in the opposite direction the wedge species pointing up out of the paper while the uh, dash bond means that it's pointing into the paper. And so what you've got to do is make a decision what you want that wedge and dash to represent on your cyclohexane chair structure. And so what I typically like to do, again you can do the other way if you'd like, um, just make sure you keep it consistent. I'll say that wedged bonds are going to signify up whilst squiggly or dashed bonds are going to signify down. Again, which one you pick really isn't of huge importance because what we're trying to do is not necessarily say that up means a dashed bond or down means a dashed bond or um, whatever. What we're trying to do is keep the relationship in which way that these substituents are pointing relatively the same. In other words, if one is pointing up and one is pointing down and they're pointing in opposite directions, we want to maintain that difference. And so what we've done is we simply assigned uh, wedge being up and dash being down. So what I'll go ahead and do now is put in our substituents in red. And so on carbon one, I'll go ahead and put in that uh, methyl substituent. It's going to be in the axial position because that's the only position on carbon one that is going to be up. And then on carbon 2, we can see that we're going to put our methyl group also in an axial position because that is the only position that can be down. So in this first conformer of uh, dimethylcyclohexane, what we can see is that both of the substituents are in the axial position. But let's go ahead and take a look at what the other conformer might be. So I'll go ahead and draw the mirror image of this first chair structure. I've done that. And what we're then going to do is we're going to transfer the numbers that we've used in the first one to the second one. Keep in mind that to flip this chair, we're going to pull this point down and pull this point up. And what that winds up meaning then is that this is carbon one, and then we simply go around the ring and assign the rest of the carbons. However, in carbon one, for the methyl group still to be up, the only option is an equatorial 
um, substituent, and I've run out of a little bit of room there, unfortunately. Um, but we can see that this winds up being our methyl substituent here in the equatorial position. On the other hand, for carbon-2, the only way that that can point down is for it to be also in the equatorial position. I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit for you. And so we can see of the two conformers, the one on the right is going to be able to put both of its substituents in the equatorial position, avoiding 1,3 diaxial interactions which are destabilizing. So of these two chair structures, we can say that the one on the right is the more stable. Now I'll go ahead and mark that. Okay, with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and try another one. In this next structure, we can see we have not only a disubstituted cyclohexane ring, but a trisubstituted cyclohexane ring. And so this is 1,3,5-trimethyl cyclohexane. And so let's wind up doing the exact same thing which we did in the previous slide, uh, but for this trisubstituted species. So if we remember, the first step is to go ahead and develop a numbering system so that we can tell one carbon from the other. So I'll go ahead and do that, starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so we're then going to draw our first chair conformer. So I'll go ahead and draw that. And map that same numbering system on to our chair. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we can see that in the 1 position we have a methyl group and so the first thing we've got to decide is what does the wedge bond, what does the wedged bond mean? So in this case simply to show you that having a wedge bond doesn't necessarily mean it has to be up, we're going to define that as down. Because remember these directions are really relative. We've just got to be consistent that once we make it in a given structure, we don't change it. And so that would make our dashed bond as defined as up, just like the Pixar movie. And so what we'll then wind up doing is put our methyl groups in. So we can see on the one, we want that wedge bond to signify down. And so we'll go ahead and put the methyl group in on the down position. And in this case, the only place that it can be is in the equatorial position. I'll go ahead and put in that explicit hydrogen too, just because. On the 2 position, we can see that there isn't any substituents, so we leave that alone. On the 3 position, we see that there is another dashed methyl group. But in this case, what we see is that it's a dashed bond, meaning up. So I'll go ahead and draw in that methyl group. Again, ME for methyl. And then the 4 position, we can see that there's also not anything there, so we skip that over, going to the 5 position, which is also a dashed methyl group, meaning up, so we'll draw on that second methyl group. It overlaps just a smidge, but you can see what's happening. And so in this conformer, we can really see the 1,3 diaxial interactions that are wind, wind up happening in this species, and we can really actually highlight that sort of via that type of steric interaction. And that clash then is going to destabilize this conformer. However, we don't necessarily know yet whether this is going to be the least stable conformer because we haven't seen the other one. So let's go ahead and draw the other conformer. So I'll draw the opposite chair structure. I'll draw it a little smaller because I'm running out of space. And remember, because we're flipping, pulling that point down, and pushing that point up, carbon 1 in this case is going to be in this bottom right corner of this conformer. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oops, and 6. So we go ahead and put in our methyl groups, keeping the relative direction the same, either up or down, but simply, in this case, they're going to be exchanging axial for equatorial positions. So in our first carbon, we see that the methyl group is now axial down. On our third carbon, the methyl group is equatorial up. The fourth carbon then is is going to be skipped because there's nothing on it, but then when we get to the fifth carbon we can see that there is another dash bond meaning up, 
But the fifth carbon, interestingly enough, we can only put in the um, equatorial position. And so we'll go ahead and fill that. Oops, let me just grab a pen. There we go. In the equatorial up posi position. So M E. Try to put a hydrogen there. Um, that would not be terribly helpful. And so we can see between these two conformers, the one on the left has two methyl groups in the axial position on the same side of the molecule, which is going to result in a fair bit of 1,3-diaxial um, steric clash, which is going to be destabilizing. On the other hand, however, the conformer on the right, this guy, we can see that while it does have a methyl group in the axial position, the only thing that it can clash with in a 1,3-diaxial sense winds up being the two axial hydrogens. And so I'll go ahead and add them in in blue if that's okay. So blue hydrogens on positions three and five. And so we can see that while there is going to be a steric clash between that methyl group and the hydrogen, a methyl clashing with two hydrogens is not nearly as bad as a methyl group clashing with another methyl group and another hydrogen. And so what that allows us to predict is that the conformer on the right, which I'm indicating with a big check mark, is going to be the most stable conformer um, of this tri-substituted cyclohexane molecule. Okay, let's give one more a try, and this next one will be just a little bit more tricky.